In our last video, we gave you some basic information on how to set up an APRS station for home or mobile use. We talked about the radios, the TNCs, and the various cables you can use. So now let's talk about some more advanced APRS topics, such as eye gates, digipeters, and APRS paths. I'm going to start with eye gates, as these are fairly simple to explain. If you've done any APRS research online, you've probably come across a site that displays stations in your area, which have been overlaid on a map. While they're pretty neat to see, these websites don't actually use radio to get their information. Instead, they're automatically updated with data that's received from eye gates. Eye gates are just stations that have been configured to upload APRS data that they hear onto the internet. Here is a map of Denver, Colorado, and the surrounding area. Notice the eye gates that are currently in operation. Also note the special map icon they receive. While eye gates do play an important role in the APRS system, not everyone should plan on setting up their APRS station to function as an eye gate. In general, you should have only one eye gate and one backup eye gate station for every 30 miles of coverage. Having too many eye gates in a small area can do more harm than good, as this just generates unneeded internet traffic. Check with other APRS users in your area before setting up an eye gate station. I would like to take a moment and point out one important fact. APRS does not depend on eye gates to work. So if your local eye gate were to go down due to a loss of internet connectivity, the APRS system as a whole would continue to operate without interruptions. All of this is important to know since ham radio and APRS is often used in disaster situations. Now let's talk about digipeters and APRS paths. Unfortunately, operating APRS mobile can make it difficult to know how well your signal is really getting out. Sometimes your APRS transmission may have to be routed through other stations to get to its destination. This is where APRS paths come into play. Let's start by looking at the digipeters, which are stations that can rebroadcast APRS data. The first type of digipeter is a simple relay. In general, relay stations are nothing overly powerful, but their job is to forward traffic onto bigger stations known as wide digipeters. Just as eye gates are sparse, so are wide digipeters. Wide stations are used to send data over greater distances, like cities or across the state, and are normally considered the most powerful type of APRS station. Too many wide digipeters in a small area can create a lot of unneeded chatter on the radio, so check with hams in your area before setting up one of these stations as well. APRS stations can be configured to use digipeters to expand their usable coverage area. These settings are configured within the TNC and are applied to every transmission thereafter. Let's take a look at a sample TNC path setting and we will break it down and explain what it really means. Here is an example of an operator that has selected a relay wide 3x3 setting. What this is really saying is the station wants their transmissions to be rebroadcast or digipeated by any relay who hears it. Once a relay station forwards the packet to a wide digipeter, it should then forward it for up to three additional hops. For this to really make sense, let me show you how the message is modified as it's rebroadcasted through the system. Again, here is the message as the user transmitted it. Here is a message after it's been digipeted by a relay station. Notice the asterisk that's been added. This signifies where the message is at in the relay process. Here it is again after being resent by the first wide digipeter. You will now notice that the final 3 has been changed to a 2. This means it's been through one hop and now has 2 left to go. As the message is received and handled by another wide digipeter, the message moves further and further away from its starting point, and the final digit then becomes a 1. This means one hop left to go. Finally, at the third wide digipeter, the message is sent one last time. The final digit becomes an asterisk to signify there are no remaining hops. As you can imagine, with each hop, the coverage area expands. Normally, you wouldn't need to set your station with three hops unless you needed to go a long distance, such as across the state. A wide 2x2 two two is a good general setting to start with. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of digipeters, paths, and eye gates, and can configure your TNC so you will be on the air in no time. 
For more information about Amateur Radio or our club, visit www.northjeffcoarl.org. Good luck in 73s. This is KF4KNF.